Thank you, Madam Cho. Dear friends, Happy New Year. First of all, on behalf of the Chinese Consulate General, I'd like to extend our warmest welcome to you all for coming to join us in this uh, celebration of the 45th anniversary of China-U.S. diplomatic relationship. China and the United States established diplomatic relationship on January the 1st, 1979. So 45 years have passed. And on the first day of uh, this year, the new year, 2024, President Xi Jinping and President Biden exchanged letters of congratulation to celebrate 45 years of diplomatic relationship. Both presidents spoke highly of the benefits of the relationship. Uh, the relationship has brought tangible benefits to the people of our two countries. The relationship has also contributed to world peace, stability, and prosperity. If you look at how far we have gone over the past 45 years, you have many, many examples to support the conclusion that the relationship is really important and beneficial. In 1979, China and the United States had less than 2.5 billion US dollars of trade. But in 2022, the trade volume between us reached almost 760 billion US dollars. In 1979, mutual investment was virtually non-existent. But in 2022, we had about 260 billion US dollars of mutual investment. And those kind of close economic and business relationship helps create jobs on both sides, helps improve people's living standards. And it's also welcomed by the world society. So we need to do more to uh, enrich this kind of exchanges and cooperation between our two countries in the years ahead. At its peak, we had 400, almost 400,000 Chinese students studying in this country. Every week, we, had, we have over 300 direct flights. And uh, every year, five million visits take place across the Pacific Ocean between our two countries. Of course, uh, due to the pandemic, we still have a lot of work to do to increase the number of direct flights to the pre-pandemic level, but progress is uh, taking place. When we look at how, how we manage to have such success in our relationship, I think the success can be attributed to the goodwill that exists on the part of our people. Both people are hardworking people. They love their countries. They love, they, they, they want to lead a good life and they like each other. So I think this reservoir of goodwill and friendship actually lays the solid ground for a strong relationship. We also want to recall the value of our ping pong diplomacy that opened the door of exchanges between our two countries and put an end to 22 years of estrangement between the two countries. And I think uh, last but not least, we want to recognize the strategic vision and courage of the elderly leaders who at that time made the decision to reach out to each other on behalf of the people of the two countries. One favorite quote uh, I always like to mention uh, is uh, from late President Nixon. When he visited uh, China in 1972 in February, he was uh, hosted by Premier Zhou Enlai at the Great Hall of the People. It was a welcoming dinner and both leaders delivered a toast. And in his toast, President Nixon said something like that. If uh, our two peoples are enemies, then the future of this world we share together is dark indeed. 
But if we can find common ground to work together, then the chance of world peace will be immeasurably increased. His words were true at that time. His words, I think, remain true today. So look, looking back on the extraordinary journey of our diplomatic relationship over the past 45 years, what inspirations we need to draw from this uh, 45 years of history. I think, in short, we can say that a good relationship is a blessing for not just the people of the two countries, but for people across the world. But still, we need to build on the momentum of the progress to bring about an even better future of our relationship. So as far as the inspirations or lessons, experience that we can draw from uh, this past 45 years, I think I cannot say it any better than uh, what has already been proposed by President Xi Jinping. Uh, he actually, in his meeting with President Biden, both in San Francisco and even in Bali, Indonesia, more than one year ago, he said that for our two countries to get along well with each other, we need to follow three principles. One is mutual respect. The other is peaceful coexistence. And the third is win-win cooperation. Mutual respect as a principle is quite easy to understand. This applies to individuals. It governs people-to-people -people relationship. It is also applicable to state-to-state -state relationship. What is most important is for our two countries to respect each other's core national interests and the major concern. Between China and the United States, we have signed three Sino-US joint communiques, which outlines the most important principles concerning sovereignty, territorial integrity, and others. If you look back uh, at the ups and downs the relationship has gone through, you can see that invariably, whenever the principles are followed, our relationship can progress smoothly. And whenever there are incidents whereby the principles are contravened, are not followed, then we will encounter setbacks or even crisis in our relationship. So mutual respect is the most important prerequisite for our relationship to succeed. The second principle is peaceful coexistence. While China and United States have a lot of differences, we speak different languages, we have different history, different uh, cultural traditions, cultural background, and we also see issues different. We have different positions on certain issues. We were different when we established diplomatic ties. We are different now, and we will be different tomorrow. So what to do? In the meeting between the two presidents, President Xi said, it's not workable if China and United States if China and United States do not do business with each other. It is unrealistic for each side try to remodel the other side. And President Xi also went on to say that conflict and confrontation would have unbearable consequences for each side. So if uh, we cannot change each other, if we uh, have to do business with each other, and if we cannot afford a conflict or confrontation, then the only option is to live together in peace. So I think peaceful coexistence is also a very important principle. And actually, it's also a fundamental principle governing international relationship. And if China and the United States can live together in peace, the world, the rest of the world, will be much at ease. 
The third principle, I think, is very important. It is win-win uh, cooperation. I think this uh, is a trend of times. Uh, sometimes I hear people talk about you know, zero-sum game, unilateral sanctions, long-arm jurisdiction, etc. I don't think these would help solve the world's problems. The world today is one like a giant, a big boat with uh, many, many cabins. It's not uh, like each country you know, having its own boat. So we have to live with the reality that we depend on each other. No country, no individual, no matter how capable he or she is, has the tools to solve all of its trouble. So it's important to reach out to each other, to count on each other. If we can do this, then we will all be better off. The world has so many uh, global challenges, climate change, pandemic, etc. And we need to have the spirit of a win-win cooperation. We can succeed, and we can succeed without uh, inflicting damage on the others. So in the summit meeting between the two presidents, it is also said <laughs> that the world is big enough for both China and United States to succeed. And uh, actually, the success of uh, each, each other can be translated into more opportunities of uh, cooperation and benefits for the other side. I recently uh, visited Boeing and many other companies in the United States. One, uh, one sentiment that they uh, repeatedly share with me is that they like to see the Chinese economy recover, they like to see the Chinese economy succeed because uh, for them, this will mean lots of uh, business opportunities of cooperation. And that is in interest of both sides. Taking Boeing, for example, in the next 20 years, they project that China will require a total of 8,560 passenger planes. And that's about 20% of total global demand. And no one uh, airline producer, no one uh, airplane manufacturer is able to meet this uh, huge global demand. So I think there is opportunity for every producer. And uh, if China is doing well, it would, uh, it would generate even bigger demand and it would be an opportunity for the whole world. And as far as China is concerned, uh, we are always willing to share with others the opportunity of growth. That's why at the uh, conference on work related to foreign affairs that took place last week, I was back in Beijing last week for this conference, the theme was China's commitment to building a global community with a shared future. We want to work together with the world community to make sure that we can have a bright future together. So China is also you know, a, a leader in uh, green technology, uh, battery, electric vehicles with zero emission. You know, that's the reason why China has been uh, so active for many years in uh, hosting the import expo, international import expo in Shanghai, which has now become an annual event. China has also hosted the supply chain uh, expo. In short, we just want to work together with the international community to let everybody share in the opportunities from China's growth. And at the same time, we want to forge partnership with all others uh, through the Belt and Road Initiative, through the Global Development Initiative, through the Global 
security initiative through global civilization initiative so that the world will be a better place for all. That is also the reason why China is resolutely opposed to artificial decoupling, artificial de-risking, to use another term, because we think this is against the law of economy. This disrupts the stability of supply chain. This hurts the interests of our consumers. And this also hurts the prospects of uh, world economic recovery. So uh, China and the United States need to work together to uh, deliver a better future for our own peoples and also for the people throughout the world. When China and the United States have a difficult relationship, the world suffers. According to one report from IMF, it says that a strained relationship, tension in China and US relationship, can cost the global economy 2% of its growth. And that's a lot, especially at a time when we need to do more to uh, expedite world economic recovery. So looking forward, despite the uh, difficulties and challenges we still face, we have uh, hope about the future, especially in California. Because uh, we think that it's the people, it is people's aspiration that, bring, that will bring about the change, that count most. And uh, when uh, Governor Newsom uh, visited China as the first US governor after the pandemic, President Xi had a meeting with uh, Governor Newsom in which President Xi said that the future of China and US relationship uh, lies with the people. The subnational exchanges actually lays the foundation of our relationship. And the future of China and US relationship depends on the youth and the vitality of the relationship exists with the subnational entities. So uh, we are very encouraged to see that in the wake of the uh, San Francisco summit, we are seeing more and more two-way uh, visits. Uh, many uh, Chinese uh, governor, uh, many Chinese uh, provincial officials uh, are coming uh, or have come to visit the United States. And we are also hearing plans uh, from uh, many organizations about uh, organizing tours or delegations to visit China. This is very encouraging. And we think that as we work to increase the number of direct flights, as we work to uh, promote more people-to-people -people exchanges, we do have a chance of uh, improvement, further improvement in China and US relationship. But still, uh, it requires uh, solid work, and we will count on your support. I have with me, before I conclude, uh, a letter from an eight-year-old elementary school student from the United States. She uh, wrote me a letter before Christmas, and I think that it's uh, interesting or it's uh, meaningful to share it uh, with, with you. Uh, she said, Dear Ambassador, I'm eight years old. I think China is really cool. <laughs> Your friend. So I, I, I'm really proud of uh, this uh, uh, friendship from eight-year-old American girl. And uh, I do believe somewhere in China, uh, her peer, uh, an eight-year-old Chinese girl or Chinese boy, also have the same spontaneous and genuine desire to forge friendship, make friends with their American peers. Uh, and I think that's really uh, the future of our relationship. It gives you the hope, the strength, to overcome uh, whatever difficulties that may uh, crop up. And so uh, with this, uh, I would like to conclude 
my uh, remarks on, on China-U.S. relationship, and the media has always been playing a very instrumental role in uh, promoting mutual understanding and the trust between our two countries. So I want to thank all of you for your hard work, and I want to wish all of you a happy new year. I look forward to working together with you in the years, in, in the days ahead, in this important year. Thank you.